Okay, welcome back to the class. So here we will uh, look at design optimization and performance measure. So uh, yeah, the general goal of optimization in the digital system is to create faster and smaller design. So we know this already. So yes, we uh, the objective yeah of 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 uh, optimization is to create a faster and smaller design on and even uh, low power design right to get smaller design means that we uh, need to have a uh, lower logic count eh? means that the component the uh, the gate in our design should be should be uh, as low as possible as small as possible and uh, the speed yeah the performance or the speed and the power so uh, before this, we know already at the uh, what we call the low level design hierarchy, uh, for example, at gate level or logic level, all right, what uh, we have done for optimization is actually uh, uh, this. Eh? We have do the Kano map, right, to try to reduce the number of uh, 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 or simplify the Boolean equation, right, uh, to get as small as possible right, our uh, for our design and uh, for sequential logic optimization all right uh, when we uh, create the uh, finite state machine yeah, when we build the finite state machine we try to uh, do the state reduction all right to reduce the number of state as low as possible so that uh, the number of flip-flops yeah, the state register is small all right so for example if uh, uh, the number of our state is uh, five or eight we need three flip-flops if uh, the number is less than uh, five we need only two flip-flops and so on we also can do uh, what we call the state encoding right so uh, this is uh, how we represent the num uh, the, the state yeah, in, in digital so this is not necessarily we represent state the first state uh, as 0, 0, 0. so sometimes we can represent uh, with other number as well all right and uh, we also can uh, choose uh, whether we want to use more or mili model uh, so uh, generally mili model uh, can give you a, a less state as compared to more model so uh, this is how at logic level we uh, we try to optimize the design eh? and also uh, at the data pass straight off eh? for example when designing either or uh, the multiplier we can uh, design using sequential method eh? all right uh, for example the adder we can design using a uh, uh, serial adder eh? instead of uh, parallel adder because serial adder you can have a uh, only one bit adder and you add the number uh, bit by bit uh, instead of add uh, all the bit uh, at one time so that will reduce the, the size of the adder significantly so this is uh, the uh, uh, optimization at the uh, lower level log or logic level however yeah in general uh, in a complex data design optimization and trade-off yeah decision generally made at higher level of design hierarchy yeah, for example at the rtn level or even at the algorithm uh, level yeah, just uh, just like we did in the previous uh, video all right where uh, this optimization yeah, at the uh, rtn level or at the uh, algorithm level will result in a uh, much larger impact uh, than the uh, lower level so we have seen in in last video that uh, for example when we want to reduce the size of our design right instead of using uh, many adder at the same time we can uh, reschedule our uh, the operation all right such that we can have one only one adder uh, at one uh, in one cycle right and uh, with that we can reduce the number of uh, adder significantly yeah? and uh, we result in the size of the uh, design all right 
and uh, also when we reduce the size of the design the, the the power consumption is also will also reduce yeah and uh, these are the performance metrics that we will look at yeah uh, in, in in order to achieve the uh, uh, high performance uh, design or a good design so we need to look at this uh, uh, what we call the performance metrics so the first one is maximum operating frequency uh, we can see what is that uh, next uh, literature iteration period throughput lat uh, latency resource utilization All right let's go to the first one which is the maximum operating frequency so uh, this is the uh, maximum operating uh, frequency or what we call the clock rate so uh, this is the frequency or clock rate yeah? the, the the frequency of the clock that we feed to our design our, to our system yeah? So uh, we cannot just simply uh, put any uh, clock rate to our design eh, because uh, there is a lim limitation to, to that eh, actually. So uh, for example, we, when we uh, give the uh, very high clock uh, rate eh, to our design, all right, uh, such that our design cannot handle that, so we, we may get the... Uh, wrong uh, output yeah, or wrong result yeah so this f max yeah, maximum frequency is defined by 1 over cpd so what is that cpd cpd is a uh, critical path delay yeah so this is a uh, critical path delay so we'll uh, uh, normally caused by these three factor yeah which is the uh, the first one is the uh, propagation delay of the logic between the register which is a uh, like this so for example if you have two register like this all right and you want to uh, send data from this the register to this register through a combination logic so let's say here we have the combinational logic all right so uh, this combinational logic can be anything for example adder or processor uh, blocks yeah, multiplier divider and so on so uh, because the signal will take time yeah when it's uh, go up from uh, this register to all right until this register receive this uh, sig signal yeah so this we call propagation or propagation delay yeah all right so the critical propagation delay is the worst delay in your design all right so for example you have many yeah this is the pass one maybe you have pass number two so this is pass number two all right go to the register as well okay so pass number two maybe uh, the delay is one nanosecond so pass number one here maybe the delay is two nanosecond so in this case yeah, the critical path delay is 2 nanosecond because this in this path eh, is the longest delay eh, as the longest delay so the CPD is 2 nanosecond okay so that is uh, the first one uh, delay due to long wire so uh, and this is more critical in nanometer VLSI. So when you go to the smaller design, yeah, especially in nanometer uh, technology, so the delay become become uh, more significant, and it, uh, uh, more significant in the wire, eh, as compared to gate delay. All right. So uh, 
the wire delay is this eh, that you delay between eh, the wire eh, that connected here to here or even the wire that connected to this register to this register so that is called the uh, wire delay right set up time of the register so uh, this is the uh, time for the register to uh, of time for data in the register to be stable yeah because uh, when data arrive arrive at the register the data is actually not stable yet so it takes time sometimes eh, for the data to be stable in the register that we call it set up time all right and uh, in practice yeah, the cpd is set 30 percent larger to allow for safety margin so this means that if for example uh, the delay that we calculate between uh, this yeah the delay the cpd is uh, for example one nanosecond all right so in the design uh, in the redesign when we want to apply the clock to our design so it should be uh plus another 30 percent margin yeah for safety purpose for example if we use uh One nanosecond so the cpd that we should have is actually one nanosecond plus uh, another 0.3 nanosecond which is a uh, 1.3 nanosecond All right so that is mean by by this All right so back to this uh fmac all right so what is that mean is that the clock yeah in that we can assign to our design for example this is the clock and uh, for example this is we have our register yes the register okay again we have the logic here all right so uh, let's for example that the cpd is 10 nanometer uh, nanosecond okay and uh, the clock the register is positive h triggered so meaning that the period here all right cannot less than 10 nanosecond all right cannot less than 10 nanosecond because if you have less than 10 nanosecond for example you have uh, 8 nanosecond what happened is that when uh, of the data is traveled from this to this it's take 10 nanosecond for this register to receive the data all right 10 nanosecond but if we have this 8 nanosecond clock period okay uh, means that when we want to read the output here so when we read here the data here not even arrive here yet and we read the data already right because 8 nanosecond the next positive it is here already so we read before the data is arrived means that we will have invalid output here okay so that is mean by by this so in this case f max must be equal to 1 over 10 nanosecond uh, which is uh, 100 me megahertz 
right? So anything higher than 100 megahertz is not is not allowed in this design because if more than 100 nano uh, megahertz means that the period here is get smaller than nanosecond. Okay, so that is means means by uh, by f mag. Yeah, so you need to know what is your what is the f mag for your design eh, in order to uh, to 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 apply the clock to your design. Right. Next is uh, what we call the iteration period. So in this uh, this one is the time yeah in time unit or number of clock cycle. It takes the system to compute all the operation in one iteration of an algorithm. So it means that uh, the time that uh, uh, your system take to uh, complete the operation, yeah, one operation. All right. So for example, uh, when we go back to this, all right. So this is the time. All right, S0, S1, S2, S3, is this the time that your system need to complete the operation? So this, yeah, the time here, all right, when you measure, for example, uh, one clock cycle is, uh, is uh, one nanosecond. So the iteration period for this one is uh, how many cycles you have? You have four cycles, so it means that that is four nanosecond for one iteration period. Right, and uh, total execution time is the time taken to complete all iteration of the system function. So meaning that, uh, for example, in your system you want to run this for one hundred times. All right, one hundred times. So uh, if one iteration period, eh, the iteration period or uh, the time that it takes to complete one iteration or one process here is for for nanosecond. So, uh, computing uh, or what we call the uh, total execution time is actually 400 nanosecond, which is uh, 100 times multiplied by 4 nanosecond. Right? It's something like this. Okay, so uh, if, for example, iteration period, or the time your system need to need uh, to complete one uh, one operation is uh, four nanosecond, and your system uh, need to do four hundred times operation. Yeah, so it means that. The process is repeated by 100 times. Okay, so uh, repeated for 100 times means that the total execution will be will be 4 nanosecond multiplied by 100, which is equal to 400 nanosecond so this is called execution time yeah the total time uh, your system need to complete the overall uh, process throughput specify the number of complete result generated per unit time okay it is the rate at which new output appear from the system similarly it can also refer to the rate at which new data can be input to the system. Sometimes throughput is referred to as the repetition rate. So throughput is actually uh, means uh, how many result that your system can uh, can can produce in one unit time. So for example, if our unit time is uh, one uh, microsecond. So in one one microsecond, how many output your system can produce? So for example, your your system can uh, will do this a multiply b plus c and so on and so uh, and so on. 
that is all right so uh, uh, throughput means that uh, in one microsecond your system can produce how many uh, how many this operation all right so for example you can change the input right so first you change the input uh, the first input a maybe one b maybe two c maybe three d maybe four all right and you get the result now uh, which is uh two plus three plus four which is nine right and then you change the input to a equal to two b equal to uh three C equal to 7, D equal to 9, and you get the output. And you do that many, many, many times in one microsecond. How many times you can do that? That is, uh, that means by throughput. Latency is the amount of time delay, uh, which is actually a delay yeah, for the algorithm to produce an output. So, so how long uh, your the delay yeah, that the uh, uh, your 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 system need to produce an output yeah, respond to a new input data so again if okay so latency means that we look at the your your system all right this is your design your module and this module execute uh, the algorithm so this is input this is output so latency means that if input here change all right So how long this system uh, need to needs uh, to produce the new output? So that is called latency. All right, and the last one is uh, resource utilization is a measure of the amount of resources required in the implementation of the data system. So meaning that uh, how many register that you use how many adder, how many multiplier that you use uh, in order to produce your system. Uh. The measure can be in terms of number of transistors, silicon area, logic count, component count, or logic blocks that ultimately correspond to the size and cost of the design. Yeah, This is uh, directly uh, uh, related to your the cost of the design. Yeah, If you use uh, many logic blocks, or many logic count or even many transistor of course the cost is uh, higher all right so let's look at this example example 6.4 so a hardware processing unit is modeled by the equation below okay so we have this equation analyze its performance by deriving the relationship of cycle count against resources constraint uh, so we have y uh, is a summation of C uh, I X I and uh, I is start from 1 so means that we have C1 uh, X1 plus C2 X2 plus C3 X3 plus C4 X4 all right so this is C1 X1 plus we plus again with uh, C2 X2 here right plus and then this one c3 x3 c4 x4 plus and we plus we get uh, and this is actually y not set yeah y okay so this is the dfg all right and from this dfg we can do the schedule like this so we can have uh, this yeah where we uh, do this in one cycle all right uh, not including the uh, the load operation here so we say that this is uh, the operation yeah the overall operation the computation operation is in one cycle only so we have 
we have z uh, or y here all right so this uh, we use resources if we look at the resources that we use we need to have how many multiplier we have one two three four four multiplier and we have three adders eh? this is four multiplier three adders right but if we uh, reschedule this all right to be like this so uh, we can have uh, four still four multiplier and now we have uh, two adders eh? in uh, maximum two adders all right and we need to clock cycle to process or to execute the algorithm and if we schedule like this to be a uh, two multiplier and uh, one adder so we can see that we can have two multiplier here one adder at one time two multiplier one adder and one adder so we will have four cycle to complete all the operations and uh, the last one when we constrain uh, to be only one adder and one multiplier uh, one adder and one, one multiplier so we can see that here we can do uh, like this and we need to use six uh, cycle in order to complete the operation all right so we can see that as we try to uh, reduce the number of uh, hardware all right with uh, the time taken to finish one operation is uh, is getting longer and longer right so uh, if we have the maximum number of hardware here so it is fast yeah only one cycle we can finish already as we try to reduce the number of hardware we can see that we need more clock cycle now and here and here yeah, the lowest cost possible yeah, this is the lowest cost possible that we can have where we only use one multiplier and one uh, adder so we can see that the uh, process takes uh, six cycle yeah, to complete so the slowest one all right so depend on the uh, design requirement if we want to have a very fast design of course we need to increase the cost yeah and uh, if the uh, the speed is not that important all right we not uh, but uh, we we want to reduce the cost because maybe this design uh, is uh, to be used many times all right so uh, if one time only then uh, then the the the, uh, the cost is not that significant but if we want to use this many times yeah, for example all right so here we have um, four multiplier already so if we use 100 time four multiplier multiply by 100 time so we have 400 multiplier already all right compare as compared to this if we have one multiplier we want to uh, use this multiplier 100 time so we only need to have 100 multiplier so that is uh yeah a very big difference all right so so that depends on uh what is the specification all right of our design whether we want to to have a fast fast fastest design or the uh, lowest cost or maybe something uh, in between like this all right so depend on the design requirement so this is the uh, the table to summarize this okay so we have uh, case one only see uh, four multiplier three adders so only one cycle count is one until uh, the last one uh, one multiplier one adder so here six cycle counts yeah so the slowest one but the lowest cost yeah okay now let's go to example 6.5 we wish to obtain a fully dedicated architecture fda so uh, yeah fda is the uh, fully dedicated architecture where all the uh, design that we uh, made 
in this chapter is actually the FDA, eh, which is the uh, architecture for very specific purpose. Eh? For example, the design uh, or the circuit that only perform this operation. So that is called fully dedicated architecture eh? of a computational block, which is described by the equation this, and uh, it is repeated 100 times. So this equation will be repeated 100 times in this case. Right. So the design space exploration consider the following cases with the constraint, okay, unconstrained resource allocation and a concurrent data path. All right. So the first case is unconstrained resource allocation. So we don't have any constraint. So we can have as many as hardware uh, or processing unit that we want. All right. So now with operator scheduling applied and uh, and uh, third case is constraint resource allocation of one adder and subtractor and one multiplier or multi uh, divider and one square root module right so num case number three we constrain the design already to use only one adder or subtractor this is one module yeah adder and subtractor remember we design adder and subtractor we can use uh, uh, a subtract uh, a subtractor add a subtractor circuit all right which is only one module uh, and also one multiplier or divider this one is also one uh, module eh? consider one module and one square root module so this is different module so only one adder or subtractor one multiplier or divider and uh, one square root module so this is square root function so we need the square root module this is given that the propagation delay of the component R multiplier divider is 100 nanosecond. So uh, multiplier 100 nanosecond, uh, 100 nanosecond. And the square root module is 100 na nanosecond also. And the subtractor is 20 nanosecond. So we can see that uh, the square root and the multiplier has uh, more delay eh, as compared to add the subtractor. Yes, of course, because this one is expensive eh, and the circuit is larger, so the propagation delay must be higher. Eh? Uh, and uh, the setup time of the register is 10 nanosecond. Right? Do the performance analysis of each design case by determining the maximum operating frequency and total execution time. So uh, we want to look at or want to calculate eh, what is the maximum operating frequency and total execution time for this eh, for all three cases right so first thing is that we need to derive the uh, dfg yeah our dfg so uh, here is the uh, dfg so we can uh, have the uh, single assignment algorithm here right where a plus b is assigned to a1 so this is a1 uh, c multiply d so this is c multiply d is assigned to c1 so this is so this is c1 and these two multiply we have c2 so these two multiply we can have this one is c2 right c2 uh, here e1 is this e uh, minus f so this is e1 right e minus f and this one c2 is this one multiplied by this one and we divide by this one means that this one divide by this one so we have uh, e2 all right so this is e2 and uh, finally e2 square root function we have z right so this is our uh, dfg and this uh, dfg we can uh, do the scheduling and uh, resource allocation right so the first one without the constraint okay so we have in a single cycle all right here so uh this this and this so we need to calculate the cpd so how to get the cpd uh maybe we can look at this one all right so uh,
So how to calculate the CPD? So uh, we need to uh, refer to this where the delay for each component here is 100 nanosecond for uh, multiplier, 100 nanosecond for uh, the area subtractor, 2 nanosecond for uh, square root is 100 nanosecond, area subtractor is 20 nanosecond, and register setup time is 10 nanosecond. So, uh, so, so the delay from here to here is 100, uh, 20 nanosecond, but this one is 100 nanosecond, and this one is 20 nanosecond. Right, so the C critical path is this one. This is the critical path. So we take this one, 100 nanosecond into account. All right, and the next one, this one will be 100 nanosecond. All right, so uh, the signal must go through this. So of course, we need to take this into account. 100 nanosecond and the last one uh, not the last one the second last this one the uh, d divider is 100 nanosecond also so another 100 nanosecond and the last one is 100 nanosecond so we plus another one 100 nanosecond that's why we have this one this one this one this one and uh, now the result is loaded into the register here and this we need to plus 10 nanosecond for the register setup time which is this one all right so now the total cpd is 410 nanosecond all right so uh, fmac we can calculate by this one over cpd so this is approximately uh, 2.5 megahertz, right? So uh, and uh, remember, you need to plus 30% uh, for safety margin. But uh, without 30% safety margin, the FMAC is 2.5 megahertz, right? Iteration period. So one cycle. So this is uh, uh, total. Uh, this is the the iteration period uh, only one cycle all right so which is uh, this 0 0.41 microsecond or still one nanosecond all right so this is a uh, iteration period right because uh, one iteration here is this is one iteration so it's it is take 410 nanosecond so iteration period is uh, 0 0.41 microsecond or 410 nanosecond all right the same one and uh, we need to remember that we will repeat the operation for 100 times, meaning that yeah, total execution time will be 410 nanosecond multiplied by 100 cycle. Eh? 100 uh, cycle here is the operation cycle. Eh? So 410 nanosecond or 0 0.1 for one microsecond multiplied by 100 so we have this 41 microsecond all right so this is total execution time and uh, resource utilization we will see that we need to have uh, at least two adder subtractor and one two three we need to have three multiplier divid uh, div divider and one square root module so this is the resort resource utilization and look at the case number two here uh, with operator scheduling applied yeah? so we uh, do the schedule all right do the schedule but without hardware uh, allocation constraint yeah this is no constraint so we instead of 
perform this in uh, one cycle so we schedule this to be like this right do this first and then have this do this first and have this and so on and so forth so we try to schedule this to have how many uh, cycle now for cycle uh, for processing part all right not include the s0 yeah s0 is a loading part so we not not count as processing part yeah so this is the processing uh, so let's look at the first one so what is the critical path delay again this one is only 20 nano this one is 100 nano this one is 20 nano so we can see that the critical path of course this this path okay 100 so this one is 100 also 100 nano, nano and this one is 100 nano this one is 100 no no so now we look at this so this is different clock cycle means that the cpd is is only uh, look at which one uh, in one clock cycle here in one clock cycle here which clock cycle take the the longest delay yeah so this one with will be 100 plus yeah the set up time yes to store the result here in the register remember so this is plus 10 nano with so 110 one nanosecond so this one is the same actually so we you have 10 nanosecond here so uh you will have 110 also second this one also 110 this one also 110 so it's the same for every every cycle means that the cpd will be 100 nanosecond plus 10 nanosecond which is 100 10 nanosecond all right so fmac now is equal to 1 over 110 nanosecond so this is approximately 10 uh, megahertz all right and uh, now to calculate the iteration period the iteration period so means that the time you take from this to finish this all right so if one cycle you need 110 nanosecond so you need four clock cycle here means that the iteration period is four multiplied by 110 nanosecond that's why you have 0 0.44 microsecond okay so that will be the iteration period and total execution time so we know that we will run this uh, for 100 times so means that one iteration period multiply by uh, iteration period so means that 100 zero zero multiplied by 110 one nanosecond uh, no means that 100 times multiply by 100 times uh, this yeah 0 0.44 microsecond so you will have 44 microsecond which is this one All right so resource allocation we will see that we use only two uh, add a add a subtractor one multiplier here one 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 so one multiplier and one square root module so the uh, size is uh, less now as compared to the first one but yeah, execution time is 44 microsecond and before that is 41 all right only slightly uh, slower but we have a smaller design now um, okay so this is case 2 what about case 3? 
constraint resource allocation for one adder subtractor, one multiplier divider, one square root module. So this is easy. So you can do that already actually. How to do that? All right, so uh, before this, yeah, in case two, we have two adder subtractor. Now we want to have only one adder subtractor. So how to do that? Easy. When we look at here, we have two adder subtractor here, and we have this one is one already, one already, one already. So the easiest way is to to move this operation to to S two. If you have here in S two, and you don't have here, means that you have one adder subtractor already. All right, and the execution time is still the same. Right, and you have a better design because uh, you use only one adder subtractor module. All right, so that is a good thing about this scheduling and allocation. Yeah, we can play around this uh, to optimize our design. All right. So uh, next is example six point six. The next example is this one. Um, yeah. So for this, we want to uh, an FADA fully dedicated architecture is to be designed specialized to compute the equation below this one. All right. Obtain the DFG that represent this algorithm such that the required hardware can be realized with the following resource constraint. Yes, we have the resource constraint. Only adder, subtractor, and square root are available. All right, again, only adder, subtractor, and square root function are available. No multiply, multiplier are to be used. All right. So if we look at this, if we want to design the DFG for this, so if we can, or if we allow to use multiplier, it's easy because we can do this, x, y, and multiply by 93, and then we use the uh, square root function right to get z but now the problem is that we are not allowed to use multiplier so how to do that so here is the solution we have this yeah first note that 93a is actually a multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 3, 1. So we can play around with this number. And uh, 3 is 2 plus 1, and uh, 31 is 32 minus 1. And uh, 3 or 2, if we have 2, all right, 2, we can use uh, shifter, right? 1 multiplied by 2 is equal to. And to do multiply by 2, we can use shift, yeah, shift to left, shift left one time, so we can have 2. And 32 is actually 2 power of 5, right? So this is means that 2 multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, means that we can shift 5 times. One, two, three, four, five, five time to get the uh, to 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 get thirty two. All right. So we can actually uh, write the uh, single assignment uh, 
form algorithm uh, to 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 do that all right so again we can have um, this so we have z going to 93 uh, x plus y right so if we uh, this one we take a should be equal to x plus y all right and this should be 93 a right because a is now x plus y so 93 a is actually uh, 3 1 multiply by 3 multiply by a right 3 1 multiply by 3 multiply by a we have 3 uh, 90, 93 a and uh, this we can change to b and 3 a 3 a is actually 2 a plus a right this 3 a and we can get 2a by using by using shift multiply by 2 because 2a is multiplied by 2 and we can, we are allowed to use adder should be no problem all right so 2a plus a is now b so we can have b equal to 2a plus a all right so this will be 31b because this one is B now. So 31B, we can get 31 actually. This is uh, 32B minus B equal to 31B. So 32B is actually 2 power of 5B. And 2 power of 5, we can shift B 5 times to get 32B. So we can say that C is equal to 32B minus B. All right. And all of this, 93, uh, this is now C. So uh, now we have z should be equal to square root of, or we use square root function, c. Okay, so this is the single assignment form for to realize that equation. And uh, right, this, so we can have the dfg something like this so to a so this is a x plus y right and uh, this is 2a all right we shift left a one time here to get 2a and this is a plus so here is 2a plus a so uh, let's let's use this one you can have 2a here because a you shift left by one time you can have 2a here and here is a so here b b is this 2a plus a so this is b 2a plus a and to get c is 32b minus b so to get 32b so b if you go this way you shift left five times so you can have 32b here and this is b so you minus so you get C, which is this one, right? So uh, now Z is square root C. So you can Z, get Z, all right? So in this design, we can see that without multiplier, we can actually design the circuit, right? By uh, manipulating the algorithm, all right? Now we can see that without multiplier, we still can can create this or implement this function in the hardware
Okay, so uh, that is example 6.6. .6. And uh, come to the end of this chapter already. So this is the exercise. Okay, so uh, for exercise 1.6.1, uh, complete the problem in case 2 of example 6.3. Furthermore, derive the du and cu. You need to realize the algorithm. So uh, this one, we we done this already in the previous 6.3 example. So we have uh, done this, du and cu. All right, we created this already in the design also. And also the, uh, the very long program for this one, these two, and even the simulation result. Yeah. So you can refer back to, to that yeah, for this uh, for the answer for this question. Complete the problem in case uh, 3 of example 6.5. So what is example 6.5? This one, case 3. So uh, 6.5, case 3. Constraint resource allocation to one adder, subtractor, one multiplier, divider, one square root module. Done already. So uh, this one, right? Just move this one to to here, and you get the the answer. Uh, derive the RTL code, hence the hence the uh, DU and CU algorithm in example six point six. Okay, this one, you need to derive the RTL code. So uh, this should be your homework. Okay, your exercise. So from this, because we have actually. The DFG already, so to derive the RTL code is uh, straightforward. And from the RTL code, you can derive the, of course, the DU and CU. Okay, so this is your homework. And the last one is 6.4 with resource allocation constraint to one multiplier or divider, one subtractor, and one shift uh, to perform the multiplication by two. Derive the very long design of the FDA that compute this equation. Okay. So this is your homework as well. So this equation, uh, you need to use only one uh, multiplier or divi divider, one subtractor, right? No need adder here, one subtractor and one shift yeah, to perform multiplication by two. So this is multiplication by two, two x. So you can use the uh, shifter, right? and derive the Verilog design. So to derive the Verilog design for this, of course, you need to uh, have the, your DFG, have your schedule and allocation, and then your RTL code. And then from that, you need to derive your DU and also DU. And from that, only then you can uh, very, uh, derive the Verilog program for, for this. Okay. So that's all for this chapter. Uh, thank you. So any question you can uh, you can ask me through uh, the our communication channel. All right. Thank you. See you again.